Welcome to our second wreath laying uh, for the Blue and Gray Hospital Association. Where we're standing at is the site for the George Bushman farm. Um, this farm was a location for the Second Corps Hospital. Um, and we're going to talk a lot about um, as far as when it was a hospital, um, what dates it, you know, it operated and what happened here. Um, to begin, uh, let's bow our heads and pray. Name Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us the opportunity to come here um, and to remember those from the Second Corps, um, as far as medical staff, uh, you know, surgeons, assistant surgeons, hospital stewards, orderlies, nurses, um, and the wounded that were treated here. Um, we ask you this in, uh, and the opportunity for us to come out here and to be able to uh, lay this wreath in their name. In your name, amen. So now the George Bushman farm, where the farm is, it's hard, it's right behind us. Um, but this farm was used by both the 12th Corps and it would be used by the 2nd Corps. The 2nd Corps of the Army of the Potomac would arrive here in Gettysburg late about 12 o'clock in the afternoon on July the 2nd. And where they would fight would be in the area of the wheat field. They would fight on Cemetery Ridge. They would fight um, units from the 2nd Corps fought on Cemetery Hill. Um, and that was just the second day. And then the third day, of course, they would fight on, you know, on Cemetery Ridge at Pickett's Charge. Um, the hospitals, the first hospitals that were set up when they arrived here, the first division of the 2nd Corps set up at what is known as Granite Schoolhouse. Uh, this was owned by the, the ground itself, was originally owned by the Spangler family, was donated to the school. But that's where the first division was set up. The second and third divisions were set up at a place called the Sarah Patterson Farm um, out on the 20 Town Road. And that hospital operated, those hospitals operated from late in the afternoon on the second day up until early afternoon on the third day. And then what happened was um, with the bombardment that occurred before Pickett's Charge, the shelling going back and forth between the Union Army and the Confederate Army, a lot of those shells from the Confederates overshot and where they overshot was on the Sarah Patterson farm. So they literally had to pick up and move um, and they needed a location. Um, and the person who was in charge of the Second Corps hospital train, the ambulance train, his name was Captain Thomas Livermore, said, I have a perfect location. It's flat, it's on flat ground, it's near you know, road and running water. We have Rock Creek right behind us um, and it's perfect site uh, for a hospital. And that was the George Bushman farm. And so on the late afternoon of the third day, Basically, all the Second Corps comes out here. So all three divisions set up their hospital out here on the George Bushman farm. Um, what happens is, when they're out here at the farm, George Gordon Meade, who's the commander of the Army of the Potomac, basically gave orders to all his corps commanders that the only supplies to be brought up from their supply base in Westminster, Maryland, was the ammunition trains and the ambulances. So no food, no medical supplies, no hospital tents. So these guys are lying out in the open as far as the wounded. And then on the 4th of July and 5th of July, what happens is there was a torrential downpour. Uh, literally rained for two days and it literally um, overflowed the creek. There were stories about soldiers floating away or even drowning as a result of it. So they had to pick up on the 5th of July and they moved to their last location, which is the Jacob Schwartz farm. And they stayed there until the hospital shut down um, and they moved everything south of town to Camp Letterman. Um, of the people that were um, in the Second Corps Hospital as far as wounded, they had the most number of wounded of all the, the corps that were here as far as hospitals. They had 3,100 Union and Confederate wounded. They only had 16 operating surgeons to handle all that. So when the armies left, again, they left a little more about 200 surgeons and assistant surgeons to handle all the wounded. Um, and uh, the survival rate they had was incredible, was 86% survival rate. And it's to the testament of the surgeons, the assistant surgeons, the hospital stewards, the medical staff, and the nurses that were here um, at Gettysburg who treated the wound, definitely treated the wounded. Uh, so anybody else have anything they want to say? All right. So, Doug, you want to... Uh, 
Yeah. Most traffic probably goes down this way. Yeah. Put it up there and angle it a little bit. Yep. Yeah. And Kristen, yeah. Kristen, since you're the newest member, new new member, <laughs> you want to help him out? All right, tension.